The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed. I'm Ken Napsok. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. And I'm Jennifer Landa. We are talking breaking news and news in general from a long time ago. Uh, that's right. Here's an update on the war in Ukraine. No, that's not news in general. Star Wars news in general, I should clarify. And we are going to have some fun uh, getting to some. Uh, well, I'll talk here in a second. I, I, I've been have I had trouble sleeping with this story. I'm like, oh, man, are we breaking <laughs> some kind of unwritten four center rule we established for ourselves. No, we're gonna have some fun discussing kind of a spoiler. Uh, we're also going to uh, get into some news uh, about uh, Sabine and some thoughts about timelines. But before we get to all of that, we're going to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash 4Center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player. A little bit later, we'll have a 4Center recommends uh, an audiobook we think you should try out on us. Uh, that's not all. As we always uh, uh, say, we uh, have our ask. Joseph, what are we asking today? We are asking people to continue to check out our Patreon page and see if it is for them. Uh, so many people kindly joined us in the big uh, buildup to Indiana Jones Summer, to the release of Dial of Destiny. We did this great other center series where we talked about the entire Indiana Jones movie series. That was available exclusively on Patreon, and now it's available to the public, and so many people joined us, and we just want to thank you for that. You're making more things possible. And the next big thing that has been made possible that is coming very soon on Monday, July 17th, is a new YouTube series, five episodes of Jennifer Landa's new and not improved, but new and different with visuals, Jedi Beat. <laughs> so that's coming soon, thanks to you. So if you want to help us out, if you want to get access to the Discord, check out patreon.com slash Center. Check it out. Check it out. We'll check in with each other here. Life, Star Wars Adventures. Jen, I think we should start with you. Uh, this isn't a business meeting. It's not a progress report on your edit, but everything good. How are you feeling? Are you excited for that 17th debut? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited. I am trying to crank through it as much as I can, uh, but, but we're going to, we're going to get there. Um, I do have something exciting to report. Well, I, I went to Target and I found nubs. Yep. The 16 inch nubs we had been talking about a few episodes back. <laughs> nubs was not on the shelf. I uh, I had seen that there was there were some end caps, like Young Jedi Adventure end caps. So I was really excited. Was not there, not on the shelf, but a Target employee kindly got it for me from the back. Um, and I was actually a little surprised when they brought it out because it's $34.95 and it is it is a plush toy. That's <laughs> there's no bells and whistles, but my kids love him and he's very, very soft. And I will be doing a review soon. Oh, oh big and soft 16 inch nubs. Love it. <laughs> yes, yes. Beautiful, vibrant blue color of fur, too. Mm. I will add. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's the yeah. age of nubs. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a big update. That's a Star Wars life adventure. Indeed, yes. Right there. <laughs> uh, for Joseph and I, uh, we ended up in the same spot uh, for our adventures. Maybe there's other adventures you had, Joseph, but <laughs> that was kind of interesting because we've been so busy. Uh, I know you're 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 uh, really working overtime to get a, a film edit done, and so we hadn't really checked in. So I was surprised to see you at the John Williams concert, though we actually didn't see each other. We were on literally the other ends of the bowl. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw a post, but uh, I'm sure that's part of your Star Wars adventures. Oh, yeah. No, my main life adventure is uh, working on the short film. Uh, again, thanks to everybody uh, for all of their support there. Thanks to Ken for being part of it. I've been uh, staring at your face as you say funny things and then, and then bad things also happen uh, to, <laughs> to Ken. So I feel like I've been spending time with Ken, but uh, mm. it's nice uh, to chat. Uh, yeah, the Hollywood Bowl adventure was amazing. And in fact, I was like, oh, oh, wow. I, I really w wish both Ken and Jennifer w w were at this. And I got home and saw yourself. And I was like, well, Ken was. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish Jennifer was too. Uh, Ken, I'll pick out a, a couple things to say about the John uh, Williams. I was actually really happy because I was like, oh, well, then I can just say a couple things. <laughs> Ken <laughs> can say even more. Uh, I've been lucky to see John Williams three times at the Hollywood Bowl now in 2018. I bought one of the $10 uh, cheap lightsabers from the vendor, and I've now taken it back to two more concerts at the Hollywood Bowl with John Williams. This one was my favorite. Uh, the other ones I've seen have been special because they've been sort of events. Um, 
a, a look back at different anniversaries uh, of his career and of his life. And uh, when I went to his, his uh, sort of 90th birthday spectacular last year at the Hollywood Bowl, it had been kind of advertised as the Hollywood Bowl's goodbye to John Williams. And the first thing he mm -hmm. said when he came out is like, this is too much fun. I'm going to do it for another 10 years. And, and mm -hmm. I think he meant it. <laughs> I think that was yeah. a surprise to everyone. So this one had this really like, um, I don't think anybody's he's been, he's been twisting his arm, but there's been so many new things where like you, you kind of got to do solo. You kind of got to do Kenobi. You kind of got to do this thing from the sequels. Mm -hmm. This felt like an old rock stars Vegas residency where it's just like, I'm going to play what I damn well want to play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it gave it this different flavor. There weren't necessarily as many bells and whistles. And so it's just a lot more focus on the musicians. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and, it was it was just so beautiful that um, some deeper cuts were played. Uh, the asteroid mm -hmm. field was played. Mm -hmm. um, I had this beautiful moment where there's there's a weird, to me, noise in, in the asteroid field that I've lived with my entire life. And then the camera was focused on the violins right at that noise where they did like a weird little neck slide on the violin, which I didn't even know you could do. Um, the uh, Leia's theme brought me to tears. Uh, and then the other big thing was, uh, you know, the, the, they're getting ready for the show. There are risers. And I was like, Hmm, risers there are always risers. And then children start to walk out with matching <laughs> shirts <laughs> and me and the guy <laughs> uh, next to me were like, are they going to do duel of the faith <laughs> at the same time? Like children in matching shirts, here comes duel of the faith. Uh, and it was, it was absolutely amazing. I could go on and on, but I'm going to edit myself there. It was really moving, really beautiful. A celebration of star Wars, a celebration of John Williams, Indiana Jones. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful indeed. And a uh, special uh, shout out to uh, Gustavo Dudamel, who was uh, the, uh, uh, I would say opening act. Sometimes David Newman comes up. That's not really fair. He's also the music director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Um, and you were telling me, Joseph, he's he's moving to New York. Is that what he's doing? He's he's. Yep, yep, yeah. He's been here for a long time. He is a rock star in this in this world. And and I think yeah. he was really he he was not lying. He wanted to do some of these songs. He conducted Duel of the Faith, yeah. I think, because he wanted to. <laughs> yeah. It was wonderful. It was wonderful stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. To uh, jump in and, and, and please continue your adventures after Joseph. But yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, the vibes always great. Um, I have constant anxiety where I'm like, who am I going to be around? Who am I? Is someone mm -hmm. going to say something? I'm going to get upset at because I had that horrible experience with Hollywood Bowl, Game of Thrones, or someone behind me was just yelling about season eight into my ear the entire time, just complaining to the sky. It was like, why? Are you <laughs> I, I, have a little, I have a little anxiety. We settled in great people around us, a lot of fun. And yeah, you're right. It was it was uh, straightforward. I'm out here. I'm playing what I want. Um, almost, uh, you know, not a ton of intros. Just like, hey, we're doing E.T. We're doing it. <laughs> like, it's just yeah. great. And um, the highlight for me that w one of the songs he played was the, um, the Adventures of Mutt from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Mm -hmm. Is that a piece of music I know by heart? No, absolutely not. But it just... Had that feeling, something we've talked about on Force Center before. We put that uh, that uh, video essay about uh, four months ago about John Williams kind of concentrating on the character. He doesn't give a damn about what, what you think. He's going to give the character what it deserves. And and for him to do that into uh, uh, Helena's theme from Dial of Destiny, as he spoke about that one again, uh, he mm -hmm. really loves it. It's a 1940s influence. He just kind of, you can tell it's just like, I, I, I'm proud of this one and I like it. Um, that asteroid field. Yoda's theme. I can't remember if I've seen him play that before. It's one of those ones. Like, no. I think I'm saying this for the first time. Um, and that's been one of my favorite songs. So yeah, uh, uh, you and I could run down the set list, but it was um, just a lot of fun. And yeah, 91 years young, still going strong. Even my mom this week was complaining about, uh, you know, she's like 74 and this and that and the body's creaking and she made a, a joke to me about, I don't know if I'm around longer. I'm like, Mom, John Williams is 91, and he's still conducting. <laughs> You're not done yet. You're not done yet. So He walked almost all the way off the stage for the encore where everybody knew he was coming back. So if he can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last thing I wanted to share, because it is just so funny. Like, uh, he, he did the encore. Uh, you know, he did the walkout, uh, came back for the encore. Um, given a lovely introduction about how great George Lucas is with characters. You're right. He's mm -hmm. focused on the character and using the music to bring out the soul of the character. Uh, and, you know, it said, said some nice words about Yoda, played Yoda's theme. The Hollywood Bowl was lit up green. 
<laughs> and then afterwards he turns around and you're like, what other character, what other heartfelt introduction? And, and like the, and here's Wonderwall meme, he just went, and here's E.T. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. It was Beautiful. Awesome. Hilarious. So, uh, yeah. My heart is full. Heart mm. is, and, and I've been fortunate to see him too uh, before, like you have, Joseph, and it, it, but the experience is, uh, it never, it never fails to deliver. And, uh, no. And it's a community too. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's being in this huge space with all these other people that have the, you know, the, the shared journey, as you say, Ken, of, uh, yeah. you know, the, the love. Yeah. Be touched by this stuff there. Uh, so there you go. That's it. That's, that's our snubs and John Williams. That's the Star Wars. <laughs> for a week. We want to get to some Star Wars news here in the time we have today, and I will say this. All right, so we're going to just do spoiler warnings for Ahsoka and technically spoiler warnings for Star Wars Rebels. I do know there's some folks out there who maybe haven't watched the show, maybe aren't super familiar, and are on a rewatch or a first-time watch lead up to Ahsoka. So we're going to say that. Uh, it is a, a spoiler story. And also, I do want to address, I don't want to get too deep into it, but like Lately, last year or so, you know, we want to make sure we aren't discussing leaks and spoilers and rumors, and we want to go to StarWars.com for official information. And, and I want to hold true to that. And this might seem a little bit of a sidestepping of that, but I, 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 it's also a fun tradition. Uh, we're going to talk about a Lego leak. And that <laughs> modern Disney era is a definite tradition. <laughs> going back for me to 2014, where uh, myself and Maude Garrett discussed a, a Lego leak story leading up to Force Awakens. And unfortunately... Got an entire um, strike on the Popcorn Talk YouTube channel <laughs> for talking. Wow! Whoa! Um, you know, it's funny. Actually, no, Mod had left by then. It was it was me and, and whoever the guest was that week, and um, I put it in the thumbnail. Like Lego leak unveils character, and the entire channel got a strike. Lego went hard after it. Uh, mm. and I always felt bad, but it's also a tradition because Lego keeps doing this. So <laughs> these keep getting out. So all that to say, we, uh, understand if you maybe you want to skip the story, uh, uh, and not know anything coming up for Ahsoka. We'll give you the second to do that and come back after the break. But for those that have stuck around, we are going to uh, talk about this Lego leak and a character reveal for Ahsoka because it's a character we've asked about, talked about, thought about, and it's very curious that this character might uh, very well be there if you believe many figs. So let's dive into it. A set for the ghost revealed a few characters, actually. First, Officer Hawkins, a human character, and a Mon Calamari character named Lieutenant Beta, and mm. the brown haired Jason Sindula. Of course, the whereabouts of Jason Sindula, the son of Hera and Kanan in a post rebel storytelling world, has been high on a list of questions topped only by the question about the fate of Jabba's son Rada. I don't want to forget about Rada. All right. We, we <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, yes, I, I do consider this kind of a leak and not a fact, but yeah, a fact. Uh, I, I think it just raises some really good discussion points. But Hera, Jason Sindula, Motherhood and Star Wars, and, you know, whether the character will be heavily featured in the series or not. So we're going to dive into that. Hera is a figurative mother. Yes, but uh, Jen, we have to start with you. Really <laughs> important to start with you. And we want to start with you. Uh, green hair, brown hair. No, I'm kidding. How important is it to be <laughs> role Star Wars? And we can also have some overall thoughts here, Jen. Yeah, you know, I think it's very valuable because it can enrich the story, deepen our understanding of the character of Hera. Um, you know, I think of Mon Mothma mm. because we knew that character for so many years, but it wasn't until we saw her relationship with her daughter, Lita, her husband, her cousin, Vel, that we really begin to understand the sacrifices, the kind of mental toll that building mm. the rebellion took on her. Um, it, it just really, it gave her character so much more depth and made her one of the favorite characters of mine now. Um, mm. And obviously Hera, we know, you know, she's a very powerful figure. She's also very nurturing, but she's also really tough. So I would love to see how she navigates being a tough leader while also trying to raise her son Jason as a single parent, because that mm. is really tough. Um, how, how will she want to protect him? How will Jason learning about his past? How is that going to impact the choices that he makes and her desire to like not have him get killed? Um, <laughs> and I just think that there's a lot that they can explore in that relationship that could be very honest and real. And I love that they cast Mary Elizabeth Weinstead mm. as the actress, uh, as Hera, because she always is very truthful and honest and raw in her performances. So I'm hoping that they'll explore that more. 
Mm. That's some great overall thoughts there and, and, and the importance of it. And I love your point of Mon Mothman, mm-hmm. how you just saw even more of the character and, and, and how you you said the, you know, more sac- more of the sacrifices. That 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 could very much uh, be a powerful uh, use of, of this character and the importance mm-hmm. of this character to Hera, who has come back in video games and books and mm-hmm. we've seen her uh, in in uh, on Endor, the Battle of Endor, all these frontline things, and you can make your your jokes. Well, I guess choppers on babysitting detail. I've already even seen that for this because <laughs> the mini fig is included in this set. Um, but you know, and I, I'm not above a little Star Wars joke every now and then. But uh, that there's bigger reason for her to be fighting out. <laughs> bigger mm-hmm. reason for her to be establishing uh, a new government or, or helping get it right, which is uh, already proven to be difficult. So, Joseph, overall thoughts uh, and your and your thoughts on uh, this theme and the role uh, that it might have in Star Wars. Yeah, I really hope that this uh, Lego leak is uh, accurate <laughs> because mm-hmm. I'm really excited about the presence of Jason. It's been a, a fun character to joke about because it just seemed like this a great big swing that was a beautiful resolution for Rebels of the, the next generation goes on, Kanan lives on in, in the next generation mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, but then it just kind of felt like this big loud chord with <laughs> no follow up. of, yeah, yeah. Uh, And, you know, and, and on the joking side for me, like now we get to really pile up our, our, uh, how do they survive Kylo Ren watch uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Grogu and Jason, which is always fun. Um, yeah. Obviously uh, lots of options. I really uh, uh, agree with everything Jennifer is saying. I think we need to continue to have more mothers in star Wars mm-hmm. featured in big ways. I think Hera is such an important uh, mother figure because I think uh, she raises really interesting questions about our own society, about how we view mothers. Because I see Hera as something that I, I see a lot of mothers do in real life in Rebels, is that she does she sees herself as the mom. She and Kanan talk about the kids, uh, meaning uh, Ezra and Sabine. Uh, I think Zeb sometimes too, (laughs) Uh, but definitely Chopper. Um, But she is so therefore in anticipating everyone's needs, both physical and emotional. And she knows what people need. Uh, And then sometimes I think that means that she doesn't get to take care of her needs first. Um, Just this really interesting picture of what it is to be a maternal figure. So there's that kind of very real world mother stuff going on with Hera. But I, I think Star Wars has always played in these kind of ancient storytelling archetypes, uh, you know, from myth and Greek tragedy and, and Vader's so figuring that Vader's so the father figure. And, you know, mm-hmm. do you have to kill the father to become the father kind of, yeah. and that idea of playing around with, more of those sort of uh, weighty, almost mythic ideas of, of what it is to be a mother. Uh, I'm curious to see if some of that kind of seeps in because Hera is such a mother figure. And now we're going to get to see her being a, a mother to her, her child as opposed to her, her found family. I uh, love all that there, Jen, any follow up on that? And I also want to ask you, Jen, on, on just expectations you might have of uh, the the mount that Jason might be in the show because I'm I'm already excited about all these possibilities and I'm I'm trying to keep my own expectations in check. He could just swing through. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I ha- mm, there's two ways it could go. Uh, he could be kept to a minimum. Maybe he's talked about a lot, right? They mm. keep him kind of off screen. But if they have a talented young actor, uh, which we saw with young Leia, uh, you know, it could mm. be interesting mm. to learn more about his personality, his relationship with his mom. Um, it could also be a good hook for younger viewers. But I'm kind of guessing, judging from what we've seen from Ahsoka so far, it seems to skew a little bit older, like, say, maybe teenage years mm. and such. Um but yeah, I think he's going to be featured probably in one episode and then maybe he'll be in the background for the rest of the series. Although he could just be like literally, hi mom. And that's all that we see of him, right? <laughs> I don't know. But. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't foresee spending a lot of time with the character. I, mm-hmm. I think the character will be done justice and have their own point of view. But I feel like what are, we're automatically talking about is not, this is the I- adventures of Jason, but mm-hmm. how does his presence affect uh, Hera and uh, affect Ahsoka. So mm-hmm. I, I so love what you're saying, Jennifer, that I, I think he's got to be a blessing and a, and a comfort to Hera um, with everyone that she's lost. But also, it, it's not just now that we're catching up with him. She raised an infant mm-hmm. while fighting a civil war. You know, yeah. what did that do to her? And, and how much fear 
does she have for him or has she or has raising him that way managed to, to help her embrace like dangers of reality she was pretty good about that in rebels of like you gotta let the kids go and try stuff because mm-hmm. that's life uh yeah. but is she able to feel that way about her own child yeah yeah well, oh, yeah go sorry, ahead no jen please please i mean my my kid is here right now in the other room and i'm on edge at any moment she might interrupt <laughs> us i cannot imagine being in a war uh and dealing with uh the unpredictability of mm-hmm. a child who i imagine jason is going to be very curious and very strong-willed right and mm-hmm. probably very powerful that actually oh my gosh you may not take so well to being told no, which mm-hmm. oof, I can't imagine how that's going to play out. But you're right. He's not going to be. He's not going to be. It's not the Jason show. Yet. Yeah. 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 It's a good spin off. Yeah. And, and, and final thought on this section of it, and I want to get to some of the, uh, the force sensitive uh, aspects of this character. In, in my nightmare, too, because it's been kind of a hectic morning uh, as well. Uh, my nightmare is that this will be proven to be like a false box. Someone edited, you know, getting the title. <laughs> but but no. that doesn't change some of our thoughts. I think about this because Jason Sedula hangs over the life and times of Hera in that way. She, he's there. Mm. The character mm-hmm. exists, and okay. so even uh, I think the reason I really want to discuss the story, other than a fun flashback to a Lego leak story, is is it, it, it's acknowledging this character. And acknowledging it as, as it would seem weird, like we'd have those hashtag where's Jason uh, kind of, uh, you know, tweets going around or <laughs> friends going around, right. if you will, um, if they didn't acknowledge it. And we know Dave understands the, the, the pieces on the board and play with. So how much he, the Jason pieces played with during this game is another fun what if and speculation. But the fact that, hey, the name the thought, <laughs> the the son of Hera and Canaan uh, exists in this world, and it will it will it will be part of her decision making and part of what motivates her. Um, I love that idea. I love that just knowing that. So that's why I'm excited. Brown hair, green hair, or not? <laughs> I, my theory on that is, you know, he is um, maybe he's a little rebellious, and he's dyed his hair brown to kind of be a normie. Like you know, I'm not gonna be like you. Yeah. I'm like, I'm on there. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Maybe he's got a bad relationship with his grandfather. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, Looking uh, at uh, the character of Jason Sandula, though, he's, uh, I said in my notes, believed to be force force sensitive. But like Joseph, you said, it's like the uh, music note at the end of uh, Day in the Life and Sgt. Pepper. It just, dong, it lingers. And we don't don't know much else. Uh, We get the sense that Harris said uh, he's uh, very much like his father in a lot of ways. And that would mean... Um, the force is present. So uh, he would be well beyond the age of training. Uh, we don't know if he has got training or hasn't got training, but uh, Jen, I'll start with you. Any, any thoughts, desires, or, or guessing on, on how that could factor into what Ahsoka or, you know, that Luke Skywalker guy, uh, what they're doing in this era with uh, Force-sensitive Jedi orders, temples, buildings, the futures, all that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah, I think that this is going to be maybe a main source of the struggle between Jason and Hera. Like, Mm. mom, I want to train. I want to be like dad. Obviously, like you said, he's past his past his prime. Uh, (laughs) But (laughs) but I don't know. And I'm sure that maybe Hera has prevented him from getting Mm -hmm. any sort of training. Maybe there were people that were like, no, he should. He should learn how to use his power. And she's like, no, I Mm. don't want him to. So that could be something that plays out. I mean, he's going to be what about eight to ten years old? Um, yeah, rough. I was trying to see that math. Yeah, I'm trying to. Do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So who? I mean, I don't know. That would, that is interesting to explore, but I cannot imagine. God, I I really don't want Luke to appear. <laughs> I mean, it could make sense, but please, please. No. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just for the for the discourse reasons alone, but um, exactly. It, I was thinking about that, though, too, though, uh, and I get your thoughts here, Joseph, but like, yeah, let's say if Luke does show up or let's say there's a conversation just to have the name Kanan said, even especially by Luke, would give me mm. that 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 feeling uh, like when I had when I was like 
I'm staring at Luke and Ahsoka and Grogu on screen at the same time. And mm. my mind is blown. Yeah. We're just like, what's happening here? Uh, and throw Din in there as well. So there could be something there. I, I'm interested in the idea. I'm interested in the idea that he might be, quote unquote, too old. Or does that mean, well, we don't need to follow those rules anymore? Is a different way to look at it? Or, or you know, it might not be factored in at all. He, he moves a piece of fruit and that's all we get. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Joseph, your thoughts on uh, the force sensitivity of it all? Uh, my hope and uh, and guess, which could of course be deeply wrong, is his force sensitivity is why he's in the show. Like, mm. I want to know about who he is, and I want to know about his relationship with Hera, and I want to know all the things it's going to bring out about the character of Hera. And if this show is successful, I, I would be happy to see a Hera and Jason show. But from what we know about the show, it, it, it seems like Jason might be there to be a pressure point. Um, obviously Jason reminds Hera of Kanan, but how much does he remind her of her lost son, Ezra? That's a pressure point of his presence. But uh, everything in the trailer seems like to me that this show is going to kind of iron out Ahsoka's timeline where she is going to work through what she feels like is the right path to move forward with the Jedi, Mm -hmm. that she's committed to the Jedi way, but ambivalent about the Jedi order. There's yeah. a stuff in the trailer about her being aware that uh, there's a darkness rising and there aren't that many Jedi left. And this is a Jedi problem and Jedi should rise to address it. And we got the quick clip of uh, uh, Yang mm-hmm. saying perhaps it's time to start again or rebuild. I, I didn't get a chance to, to rewatch it for the exact quote. So if there's this this kid right there, you know, the son of two wonderful heroes as, hey, if it's time to rebuild... What about this guy, this green haired? Oh, he's brown haired now. What about this guy mm. right here? Yeah. Uh, I think that could be a pressure point for Ahsoka seeing, like, l- look at this child who, who, who has survived uh, being born and raised in a civil war. Do I want to bring him into this path? Mm. Does Hera want to bring him into this path? Yes, and, 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 and your scenario uh, doesn't necessarily need to factor in Luke, right? Luke, Luke go can be doing what Luke is doing over there um, and, and just what Ahsoka's dealing with, what Ahsoka's feeling. Uh, yeah. The, the Hawang moment is a great thing. And it just, does, does, yeah. What, what thoughts does Hera have on that? You know, I yeah. don't think she's going to snuff out the, 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 the creative fire of this kid. Uh, you know, I think, but no. that, like you said, you keep saying pressure point. I love that term of, of, of what it could possibly do. So a lot could be at stake there, Jen, right? A lot could be at stake. And immediately my mind goes to, will we see a flashback of Kanan? <laughs> will Freddie Prince Jr. you know, appear as his character in live action form? He says but no again, more favors. He already said it. No more favors for my friends up there, he said. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, hmm. but I have to I have to control my wild thoughts because I, I immediately am like Star Wars Rebels in live action, but this mm-hmm. is the Ahsoka show. <laughs> There's going to be things that are happening beyond. It just happens. We just happen to have some of these Star Wars Rebels characters within the storyline. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Ahsoka and the Rebels season two, and they'll put out uh, uh, an LP as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Benny and the Jets. Uh, love that there. Uh, so that is uh, one look at the Ahsoka series, but we're not done. We're going to take break we are going to talk a little bit about timeline uh, the bigger new republic era and all those kind of things uh before we do that we're gonna have a force center recommends an audiobook we think you should get ready to try out on us joseph what do we have yeah this one is already staring at me saying read me mm-hmm. read me uh, as we're lucky to get some advanced copies it's star wars inquisitor rise of the red blade by delilah s dawson uh can you have the great note here the pre-order until july 18th that's right. But that's this week or next week or when it, I, time has no meaning these more. <laughs> anymore, I mean. Yes. Uh, so pre-order that or download any audio book we want. We just think you might want to try this one out on us. Download your free audio book today by going to audibletrial.com slash four center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash four center for your free audio book. All right. Quick break on the other side. The Ahsoka timeline is in question here. Uh, let's stick around for more four center. Yeah. Here you go. Welcome back. Welcome back to Force Center. Taking a look at Star Wars news and uh, some Ahsoka timeline information. 
Uh, Natasha Lou Bordizzo, interviewed by SFX Magazine. And even just this morning, there was more from this interview, as often happens. You put your news notes together, and then the other chunk of the interview comes up. And she was talking mm. about some stuff of the Ahsoka and Sabine relationship. There might be some tension. They have maybe separate missions, but it's going to combine them together. A lot of cool things. We've heard some of that before, uh, so we'll dive in uh, when we get a chance to dive in uh, a little bit more deeper to that. But she asked, she had a quote out there that was real simple. It was direct. Um, she she gave a clue as to that exact time period for the upcoming series, which you know does not account for flashbacks, flash forwards, flash sideways. We'll see. But drumroll, please. She said, Ahsoka runs along the same timeline as The Mandalorian Season 3. And the shows are all connected. There's just so many parallels. Well, not uh, surprising necessarily, this uh, this response came when asked if she felt Ahsoka was part of something bigger in a quote-unquote crowded Star Wars timeline. So I guess we'll start here, Jed. How how literally do we take that or want to take this timeline comment that we have Season 3, we have Jack Black and Lizzo over here, we have Ahsoka and Sabine (laughs) over here. Exact same. Uh, how literally do you want to take it, or, or should we take it? Yeah, I think that it's. I think it's helpful for the average viewer who might get confused, myself included. I'm always consulting my notes. When does this take place? How many years after five years? So it's helpful that it's like running parallel. We didn't see Ahsoka in Mando season three, correct? Yeah. So it makes sense that the show's timelines are parallel, which again, I'm starting to go wildly on this. And immediately <laughs> I think, well, that means that the final episode of Ahsoka season one is going to have uh, Din Charin and maybe Grogu crossing over mm. or maybe both storylines converge into Dave Filoni's movie, right? <laughs> that's where we're all kind of <laughs> thinking about, um, which again, I, I feel like that's that's wild speculation. Uh, mm. But I feel like everyone kind of wants that to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I want to say it's a missed opportunity, but I do think we're going to get some crossovers at some point. I mean, look at Mando and Book of Boba Fett, right? So, um, it's possible. Their crossovers are possible. Yeah, and when done right, I think they're fun. Yeah, a lot of uh, I, I love just saying some clarification. I mean, I I, I think we know this series is going to have. I, I don't know how to refer time jumps this and that. It's just going to tell its mm. own story. But I think the bulk of the story uh, to know that it might be around this time, same time, just on a, on a surface level, like you said, Jen. All right, shows why maybe Ahsoka didn't join any any big fights that Din might have been in with the other Mandos in in season three. Uh, she's hmm. off doing her own thing, so I like that. I do. I'm never over. I'm never overly concerned about the exact moment in time. But yes, as this new Republic era, era forms and is being formed, um, I, I love kind of knowing, you know, the map, the story map, so to speak. It does kind of help me, and I think it helps others, which is why we have, uh, you know, our good pal uh, Alex. Um, Starves explained uh, who's able to help us with timelines every now and then. Those canon videos, they, they matter to me. Yes. Over, oh, here's where they happen. So I'm excited about this uh, and excited about the, the parallels. That is, goes into some themes there. Uh, but Joseph, uh, I'll kick it back to you up top. How literally do you want to take this? Uh, and how, how literally should, should we take it? And, and what do you think? I normally uh, take a, a big grain of salt uh, when actors are asked about these things that are mm-hmm. like that. That's, you know, you're not asking me about Sabine's internal world, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but the specificity of it, it's mm-hmm. the same time as Mandalorian season three makes me feel like that, that tracks. I, I take it, uh, I take it pretty literally. Mm-hmm. Um, it also, for me, it tracks that we might have some, flashbacks to iron out a little bit of Ahsoka's journey and, and what I perceive to be jumping around in her timeline mm-hmm. on, on Mandalorian in, in Book of Boba Fett, or not in her timeline necessarily, but in her emotional arc. Yeah. Um, but then if by the time ah- Ahsoka really goes and says, all right, the main adventure is kicking off, let's go, Sabine, I got a lead on Ezra kind of thing, it tracks for that part of the story to be along the same timeline is the Mandalorian season three with just the awareness of what's going on in the new Republic and its challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the Mandalorian season three up the stakes of the Imperial threats. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of them are still going to be under the radar, uh, but Carson Tava's banging the drum and and we see that he's got all those other rebel pilots, including Zeb who are probably on board with. Yeah. There's a lot of Imperials out here. Uh, Pershing's exploits on Coruscant have got to make, some noise mm-hmm. uh the bombing of bo katan's home mm-hmm. and then you know our heroes wouldn't know this but we the audience do that during mandalorian season three there's there's a 
change in the imperial power structure uh, right. with Gideon's demise. So that stuff all makes me feel like, okay, this is uh, it, this is the the era of uh, the imperial resurgence threat is becoming louder and louder. Mm -hmm. It's crystallizing, and and you know, um, and I don't think it, it, the three of us here at all are suggesting that the show is so connected and so runs along the line that we're going to get uh, those around the corner answers. But just hearing mm -hmm. both of you talk about it, I'm excited for. Um, Maybe having that moment where you're like, "Oh, that's why Thrawn didn't show up with with Paleon in in to speak to Gideon. <laughs> like he was busy doing that. <laughs> he was riding the space whale. Like you know, yeah. I don't think it's going to be that connected. But just knowing, just having those kind of answers, uh, I think that's why I uh, I'm kind of excited about that um, there as well. But yeah, yeah, there's so many big things. Um, not even uh, these aren't things that are quote left unanswered, but just like there was a lot going on, and, and it's uh, it's uh, an important part of the emerging Star Wars storytelling here of this, what they're calling kind of the New Republic era. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm with you too. Most of the time, this sounds like a snarky comment, but like, yeah, I wouldn't expect an actor, actor to have the exact timeline moment <laughs> of, of the show, but this was just, it's very direct and very clear and, and there's just so many parallels. Part of that uh, statement uh, is kind of what got me excited to talk about it there. She talked about having no idea about Filoni's movie, which does make sense. These are comments echoed recently by Katie Sackhoff and Carl Weathers, uh, which kind of got me thinking, so I want to know your takes on it. Do we just, uh, you know, do we just simply want all the shows to lead into a movie? Jen, you were kind of excited about that. Uh, will there be big deaths along the way? Or in the movie, does Optimus Prime die in Dave Filoni's movie? <laughs> Similar moment in my life. Uh, let's discuss. This is definitely leading to the movie, Jen. But, um, yeah, how, how are you feeling about that right now? And uh, that dreaded uh, but also celebrated connections word. Well, I am hoping it is leading to a movie. You know, one of the reasons that Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead captivated audiences week after week was because their storylines were predictable and they killed off main characters. You never knew who was going to die. The thing with the Mandoverse is that we know most of the characters are going to be okay, right? It's mm -hmm. like a fun serial adventure. The only Star Wars show that has killed off main characters is Andor. But the reason why I think it was easier to do an Andor is because, number one, it's a big ensemble cast. And number two, most of those main characters were characters that were brand new. Uh, they didn't have existing storylines elsewhere in the canon. So they could, they, the, the continuity issues weren't, weren't a problem there. Um, so I think in a movie, it would feel right if there were some deaths or some sort of big conclusion, it would be a great way to honor a, a main character. Um, and it could be really dramatic to see it in the movie theater. You know, I think of Marvel and the big snap and all that stuff, right? So uh, that would be the time to do it. I don't think they're going to do it in the series, although I kind of I kind of would like it. I don't know. It just it, it makes it mm -hmm. more thrilling, right? Mm -hmm. it, but of course, sad. <laughs> Who, who are you? Who are you? Who's uh, whose neck do you got on the block there? <laughs> do you want, who do you want to see go? Is this are you? Is are this is this Zeb Death Watch? What, what's going on here? I mean, it, it just feels it feels really real. It yeah. feels really real. I mean, I I was crying or like gutted in in Walking Dead and Game of Thrones. I'll never I'll never get over the Glenn death in Walking Dead. Oops, spoiler Ugh. alert. Yeah. Uh, Never get over that. I, I had a really time actually continuing the show. I was so upset. <laughs> it, it broke a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, but that to me is like, oof, that's a show to watch, right? And I love Mandoverse. I love that it's fun, but let's let's have some tests. <laughs> no, <laughs> what am I suggesting? I, I, look, I, I started. I started thinking about it because you know. Um, there's a lot of uh, a thousand reasons that Dave is not sharing script pages with anyone, <laughs> you know, I, mm -hmm. a lot of reasons, but so I, it just was like, you know, he wants to be able to put the, put it all together along with Favreau and anyone else involved in the creative process without any pressure. Right. You know, uh, not that, not that Katie's going to text him and be like, keep me alive. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think he'd change anything what he's going to do, but I, I just, I, this is the first time I really started thinking about deaths. I don't know who I have on the chopping block, Joseph. I, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, it could be anybody, but if it leads to it, add some weight 
wait to uh, this new Republic era, the dangers that are going on, and also answer some of those questions of, well, where are they when, you know, which mm -hmm. I, I don't ever want to get lost in those stories, but you, you think about that. You think about that a lot. In fact, this Ahsoka series is kind of answering, well, where the hell was she in the Civil War? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we had coming right. in Clone Wars. Uh, so anyways, a lot to think about there. So Joseph, uh, who's, who are you suggesting to be dead? Well, let me scroll back up to the Lego leaks. Uh, I think uh, First Officer Hawkins and Lieutenant Beta. I think new characters we meet in this series uh, yeah. that we fall in love with for five episodes. Uh, I, I really do think that this is. Um, I don't. I don't actually don't want any of the Rebels characters to go early on because I, I'm yeah, happy yeah, yeah. to see them in live action and I'm happy to have a, a lot of elbow room for future storytelling for mm -hmm. them. I, I don't want to cut off uh, the possibility of storytelling. Uh, I also just don't think that Ahsoka is heading to her final fate. It, I still think Ezra is, is and Ahsoka are fated for some uh, more just world between worlds like destiny where they are, they are helping uh, the, the cosmic force in some way and, and being a part of things. But I just don't think that that's what this season is about. Uh, I, I think that yes, we've got the movie coming, but also I just think that, everyone Filoni and and the entire creative Star Wars team wants to spend a little bit more time with these characters now that they're existing in live action hmm. I'm not thinking about the movie too much because the movie is very far away time wise yeah. um and uh, for me the whole interconnected thing I, I know that's now kind of it, it's up and down where that's a good or bad thing right right what what's good about it is is to me is it if is if it enriches the characters and the world and their relationships make the characters in the galaxy feel even even deeper and more lived in. Mm -hmm. To me, the interconnected is a problem if each season of storytelling or movie doesn't feel like its own complete thing that it that it starts a thought and it finishes the thought. Mm -hmm. And I personally feel like Star Wars has been doing a good job with that. So what I'm really hoping for this show, is that it is about Ahsoka making peace with her Jedi path in this new time and the rescue of Ezra. Hmm. I'm not expecting a Thrawn showdown. I'm not expecting the fate of Ezra. I'm expecting Ahsoka to get her feet under her and decide who she wants to be in this new age and uh, hey, it, this could end with a group hug with Ezra, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and and the equivalent of uh, Thrawn uh, as Vader at the end of A New Hope, spinning his spaceship, going what? <laughs> uh, and and defeated, defeated in this battle, yes, but yeah. not in defeated in the war. Yeah. Uh, and and some people might see that as like if Thrawn's the big bad, then it's going to be unresolved if if they don't win. I, I, it's a chapter, and I just want yeah. it to be a complete chapter. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I think they have done a, a a a solid job with all these shows and series of, of of dealing with the story that they're telling at the time, and that yes, there's mm -hmm. bigger things at stake and bigger things at play. I think they've done such a good job at it that sometimes that's why that word connect becomes a negative word to be, where people are like, it doesn't, it's not, it's not connected, you know, and that that weird kind of uh, gray area over that word. Um, and I think you're talking about things I really enjoy, but what is this story trying to do? And one of the big ones we talked about is. Ahsoka just kind of going, let me go out and connect with a larger picture. How do I, how do I even do that or feel about that? And <laughs> like, what's going on with me and that? Um, I think it's going to be one of the big things there as well. So yeah, I, I with you on that. Um, I'll, I'll try to come up with the, uh, the, the death board. <laughs> Is it eight <laughs> five? Uh, I'm with you too. I don't think it should be. Uh, yeah, just, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm open to any, any, any way they want to go, of course, but just, uh, uh, let, let's celebrate everyone in live action right now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, if I don't want, uh, I've, I've gone, I've fully reversed on chopper from, from back in the days uh, right. when he was uh, too silly for me, I was wrong. And if, if anything too bad happens to chopper, I will write a, a strongly worded skeet or whatever the hell we're calling posts these days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Spout, skeets, posts, all these things. Uh, great stuff there. Jen, any final thoughts, comments, and responses to our death list as well? 
No, now I'm now I'm changing my mind. All right, everyone can live. <laughs> uh, no, Makes- I, I I do know what you mean though about stakes. I, I think yeah. if if for reasons outside of the story, everyone feels totally safe at all times, that bad things get happen to them, it, it does start to lower the stakes. So I, I really I was joking about the death, but I think you're really on to something about how do we keep the stakes high, mm-hmm. right? That is that for me is the challenge. It's fun to go on these adventures, but at the same time, it's like I want there to be real. I want the threats to be real. Mm. Um, and if you know, it feels kind of like, uh, well, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anymore. I, I'm, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You know, I'll spoil the. How about I'll spoil the red wedding? You spell something else from Walking Dead. We'll be people will be mad at us <laughs> from ten years ago. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Oh, all good. Zipping it. I'm well, zipping it. Uh, it's all fun stuff, and I got to tell you, I've, I've, Ahsoka's been one of my favorite characters for a while. I've uh, I'm getting more excited for the show as we as we head into August and the August twenty third release, uh, and it's little things like this, uh, taking these comments and having fun speculating with you all responsibly. Yes, but. Uh, thematically and just big picture. I think there's a lot of cool things. I'm excited about this era uh, of Star Wars storytelling and and blessed that uh, we get to have it because it's something that even three, four years ago, whether or not they were working on it in boardrooms or not, um, we didn't have it as fans. We didn't think this kind of era existed, but um, post Mandalorian, we do. And it's Mm -hmm. full of possibilities. So, We'll keep you all updated. Some other news stories out there that we won't really touch upon, but we do want to acknowledge, including, Joseph, I do want your one-sentence comment on the new 6-inch Obi-Wan with T-16 Skyhopper goggles and Ghost Qui-Gon. What shell space are you clearing for this? Hello there. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have to say hello there to a Walmart pre-order because I need that fellow to be part of my life. It looks great. You can take that little man to more concerts. Uh, <laughs> we're out of here today. I, oh, I did want to shout out uh, our, our, our buddy, friend of the show, former guest on Four Center, Adam Witt, um, uh, hooked me up with those tickets and, and he edits the highlight uh, videos uh, for that event. And uh, it, it was just wonderful. And so, Adam, if you're listening, thanks so much. Uh, we really appreciated uh, uh, Mark's birthday gift of heading out there. So, a lot of fun. Um, all right, we're out of here today. We'll uh, let you know where you can find us. We are currently on Twitter. Still, uh, we'll have a group discussion if we're going to join threads. I think we all have individually, so it might make some sense, but we'll have a business meeting over that one. And our Facebook page is Four Center Podcast, Instagram, uh, YouTube as well. Subscribe over there. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the Jedi Beats when they drop. Podcasts available on Acast, iHeartRadio, and more. Just search. You'll find us. Merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash Four Center. And so set up top. You can support us there directly at patreon.com slash Four Center. You can follow me at Ken including uh, Spoutable, Blue Sky, and uh, uh, Threads. All of them. I'm just there. All of them. Uh, trying to figure it out with all of you. Or go to my website, KenNapsock.com. If you're in Comic-Con on, uh, or in San Diego, July 20th, American Comedy Company, Mark Ellison Friends, our yearly Comic-Con show will be there. Jen, where can they find and follow you? You can find me on Instagram, at Jennifer Landa, Threads. You know, we have numbers right now, I think. But if you search Jennifer Landa, I am on Threads. I'm so happy to be there. I'm still on Twitter. At Jennifer Landa, YouTube, at Jennifer Landa, you know the drill. And oh, yep, Jedi Beat episodes coming soon. Coming soon. Hey, Joseph, take us home. Where can they find and follow you? You can find me uh, with the handle at Joseph Scrimshaw on almost all social media except Spoutable. I haven't had time for that one. And this mm. whole thing feels like when you're trying to make plans with your friends, they keep texting and changing which bar you're going to meet up at. <laughs> We're going to meet at Hive. No, we're going to meet at Blue Sky. We're going to meet at Threads. Uh, so uh, please do meet me at Threads. That one does seem viable, and I'm excited to be there. Uh, thanks again for everyone's support on the short films. More news on that coming soon. There you go, my friends. All right. Well, some cues later in the week. We'll see you all. Thanks for listening to Force Center.